you know when something becomes a skill you know that when you do something once twice and thrice and you keep working on it it becomes a skill and you become to become a master of that skill god is <clears throat> releasing something in this room today skill a gift called skill is coming to some people i'm believing for everyone skill to get results skill to see success skill it's not fluke anymore i was watching it this morning i said almost i wanted to go into warfare mode then i said you know what god there is so much of grace in this room and call on this ministry you know and i said when your people anointed rise up i want to see how the devil reacts while worshiping now you know what i saw i saw a throne in the clouds a huge throne being lifted up for the name of jesus in this region okay but when i came at 10:30 i saw black clouds but now i see a throne look it's raining now <laughs> that is amazing thank you jesus zatala barion toroko seke what is happening lord let us not rush god something is happening right now you know we are going to even increase not increase expand as a worship team we are dreaming of more instruments in this place we are dreaming of building ourselves to host the presence of god with excellence we are working towards it santo lo boria tara bahasata some of you had to make a choice to be here today and you have made it the lord is going to reward it are you excited for the word second kings chapter 20 let's try it this time right let's try it this time last week did i mention that yes. we never got to it shantolo boniante re bravo santa all of you on zoom you're with me okay i am i'm watching you you made a choice some of you had to make a choice you made a choice you're here today's word is going to elevate you wow second kings chapter 20 this is that kind of a word which which will i heard the holy spirit say that he's going to correct things that have come to us through our bloodline we're going to go back and correct some things okay you ready for this this is one such word get ready for this okay second kings chapter 20 <clears throat> maybe you all can rise up just to read this word once let's read verse 1 2 3 4 and 6 okay i'm going to read oh you have the new king james version i'm going to read from the new king james version as well okay second kings chapter 20 <clears throat> nevin i'm seeing keys come into your hands i don't know if she's hearing this but i'm seeing keys come into your hands interesting pradeep and vian i see keys multiplying 
two keys and i'm seeing one key here something is happening keys i want people to believe for properties can you believe for it right now this very moment rafa sakatala bayanto roboniante lord i thank you for the grace of properties in the mighty name of jesus in this room shikarabani on torobo look whatever was delaying you to possess your property whatever was delaying you to get into your own space that delay is being broken right now look i have not even started preaching but i'm telling you what is happening in this room right now because the throne is being lifted up and the grace is flowing whoever wants to believe this it is your portion tell the lord lord i want this grace to receive things keys into my hands to open doors reforian taraba hasikalaya taraba thomas believe it navin the keys are coming into your hands pradeep and viana the keys are being multiplied my goodness something is happening keys properties stepping into new territories is happening right now safara baliya taraba ha ziforianto robo come back with a testimony zimbro no sokoriata thank you thank you thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus sometimes some things have to be spoken kalpana i release transition shatala bariantaraba korra basekoniante these people are all pulling prophecies from me now you also start pulling prophecies from me maris the lord appreciates you today maris the lord appreciates you today you're able to hear us is people on zoom able to hear me clearly maris the lord appreciates you today today you you prepared yourself and you came the lord appreciates it sakatalaba okay second kings chapter 20 in those days i'm new king james version everybody can read with me okay in those days hezekiah was sick and near death and isaiah the prophet the son of amos went to him and said to him thus says the lord set your house in order for you shall die and not live then he turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the lord saying remember now o lord i pray how i have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have done the was good in your sight and hezekiah wept bitterly and it happened before isaiah had gone out into the middle court that the word of the lord came to him saying return and tell hezekiah the leader of my people thus says the lord the god of david your father I have heard your prayer I have seen your tears surely I will heal you on the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord and I will add to your days 15 years I will deliver you from this city from the hand of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David wow can be seated this word some people have to hear not just once twice okay let's go i'm going to go with king james version to sound more king kingly okay you ready in those days was hezekiah sick unto what kind of days he was going through a lot of conflicts challenges and the conflicts and the challenges began to hurt him 
I'm going to start teaching you in a way that as you learn from this, you should become equipped with it. In life, you can go through things. But what you go through should not make you. You should go through it, but you should not be made through what you're going through. Right? You're with me? That itself is a, I dropped a bomb. Yeah. You know, people go through disappointment and become disappointment. No. People go through tragedy and they become tragedy. You know what I'm saying? We should not allow that to happen. Yes, you went through fire, but the fire should not consume you. You know what I'm meaning? Yes, you go through a trial, but the trial should not shape you through its flavor. You should come out and still be how God has called you to be shaped. Safala Bariantaraba. Hezekiah, you know what's the name, meaning of Hezekiah? Yahweh, Jehovah is my strength. <laughs> Some of you, God has already called you, deposited inside of you strength, which is from Him. He has deposited deposits inside of you. And He's actually waiting for the deposit to rise and rise and rise. But when things in life begin to come around you, it has a way of whispering things into your heart, into your mind, to make you not believe the deposit you are carrying. Hezekiah was having a lot of conflicts. You know, conflicts. I know some of you can relate to this and you can say like feels like conflicts never end so how yes conflicts will come will go but can you be in a place where that conflicts cannot leave a scar on you or bruise you or strip a part out of you can you be so whole and say, I will face whatever, but that whatever will not make me. I will still be me. My identity will not be lost in the transition. When Hezekiah was battling with the enemies, something happened. Constant conflicts, disappointments, turmoil, feeling hopelessness, Everything got into his system. And in those days, he became sick. There is something I want to teach you. When you notice, all of a sudden, your confidence in God is going down in an area. Don't stay still. Rise up and fight. When your confidence in what God has spoken over you or done for you is now being submerged by the enemy don't let it happen rise up and pray against it one notch down it is so important in life that you have to know who you are and versus what your circumstance is making you to be because the moment you know the differentiation you will have to say no to the molding. I'm going slow so that you'll understand. The molding that's happening. And you have to actually fight against it. It's very important. In Hezekiah's case, he went through a lot of oppositions. He cried out to God. God sent prophet Isaiah and God delivered him. This is in the previous chapter. But in that process, he was injured. This is a kind of a sermon. It's very prophetic in nature. You with me? I've not lost you, right? Now we are Sunday morning. Our services will be shorter. Don't worry. Okay. 
Hezekiah went through conflict, cried out to God. God came to his rescue. God delivered him, right? Out of the hands of his enemies. But what the enemy threw on his soul, what the enemy threw on his spirit, what the enemy threw on death threats on his life, sat in his system. He didn't fight that. And then he ended up being sick. And in those days, the Bible says, oh, it's right here. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death because everything was death threat against him. The enemy was defeated. The enemy left. The enemy left a deposit. When the enemy leaves a deposit, don't host it. Yes, you went through a trauma. Why should that trauma remain in your life? And why is it remaining? Because you are accommodating it. You have made peace with it. You have made an agreement with it. This is how demons stay too. They won't leave until you have broken an agreement with them. So don't keep that agreement on. Tear it. Divorce it. Break it. Renounce it. Forsake it. You have to do that. Now, Hezekiah is not doing that. His name means God is my strength. But right now he's sick. He's not risen up into his true identity of being strong and God is my strength. What happens? And prophet Isaiah, hold on, this is so powerful. Can I go slow? Yes. Prophet Isaiah, you know what is Isaiah means? God saves <laughs> this is how grace works. You want to know how grace works? When we use that language of grace, what it actually means is when grace comes, it releases the real you out of you. Getting it? It releases the deposit in your life. When a grace of God comes upon somebody, God lifts you up to be the real you, how he has designed you to be. You know, in this instance, Hezekiah was, God is my strength, but he has lost it. He's sick, he's dying, but now a grace comes through a prophet called Prophet Isaiah. His name is Jehovah Saves. And he comes to save what? The strength that was hidden in Hezekiah's life still. Guess what? This is so prophetic. How does he provoke the grace? You want to see it? It is so amazing how God functions. <laughs> I'm giving you a deep one now. Okay. And prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos. He is, you see his introduction? The prophet Isaiah. Why does Bible add the son of Amos? Another prophet. Do you see this? Do, do you see the connection? <laughs> okay. Isaiah, the son of Amos came to him and said unto him, Prophet Isaiah is a major prophet, okay? He comes and says to him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Can I give you a detail about the prophets? Some prophets even prophesy in a way that will provoke you into the real you. You're telling me, okay, this is, this is a little deep. Prophet Isaiah was lying right now. He was telling him, Hezekiah, you lost your identity of God is your strength in your life. You are detached yourself from that identity. And because you lost that identity of who you are with God, surely you are going to die. But if I give you this word, because I am a prophet that carries the grace that saves. Oh my goodness. That identity you in you will be saved now. And you will rise up to that identity and your grace of saving will work in you. And you will rise up to your identity and you will save yourself from the tragedy of life. My goodness, this is deep. You need prophets who come like this, who will come and provoke you in correction. He was not cursing him. Now watch his language. 
can we go step by step when it's 12:45 we close okay <laughs> okay watch this what happens he comes to him and says thus says the lord set thine house in order is there an address okay i i think you know what is an address an email address is like to you to you to her hello sir hello and there have to be a name and then the message has to be delivered there is no delivery there is no pointing of whom isaiah is talking to this is what isaiah he came to hezekiah who sick unto death hezekiah has embraced the sickness and is dying now the prophet comes and speaks to whom which part is he talking to keep thinking keep thinking keep watching the scripture who is prophet isaiah talking to he doesn't say i'm talking to the real hezekiah because hezekiah means god is my strength he's not talking to that person he's talking to the person who is sick and he's telling that side of the man who is sick and ready to die he's speaking to that person oh my goodness you need to ask when when prophets come and prophesy <laughs> prophets can prophesy to your spirit prophets can prophesy to your soul prophets can even prophesy to your flesh oh my goodness and i've done that many times and i watched how a person reacts and i see some of them when they go through a poking surgery of pokes it's ouch but all of a sudden the spirit in them rises up it is not like oh my darling sweetie pie no you poke them you provoke a real prophet should provoke you for the real you so now what is hezekiah prophet isaiah is doing you're loving this message already right prophet isaiah says thus says the lord but to whom start saying set your house in order actually is giving him the solution oof he's actually saying the the order in your house in your lifestyle is broken set it in order for thou shall die and not live here is language he's saying you're not doing something that is needed so do it and then die you getting it okay we have to go slow here he's telling you're not done this yet this is your responsibility to set your house in order but you're not doing it but do it and then die what kind of a prophetic word is that set your house in order because you're surely going to die but finish that responsibility and then die and hezekiah now next scripture then hezekiah wakes up then the bulbs in his bulbs torch light fire emojis you know like you know what is that is that like how it is nowadays people don't say words they have an emoji you know like fire so hezekiah's dramatic expression was oh my goodness i've not set my house in order which i want to but i have not done it because i've embraced sickness more than being aligned in order to god my goodness he is like i've embraced what i've gone through more than embracing the identity of god to raise me up is god talking to somebody i know he is talking to somebody and and when hezekiah comes to that understanding the first thing he does is this then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the lord saying what next verse i beseech thee o lord remember wow this is powerful you need to ask i beseech thee o lord remember now how i have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight and hezekiah wept sore so hey please listen to this closely so you're telling me the sickness is not because 
He has done something wrong. Do you see this? Come on, people of God. The sickness is not because he sinned. The sickness is because he didn't fight the enemy's orderlessness in his life. This is deep, guys. You're getting with this with me? So, help me to understand this. He's basically telling God, God, I have walked. Look at his language. Remember now, there is some guts there. Nobody prays a fake prayer when they're dying, people of God. <laughs> right? You're already grasping for breath. And now will you simply say, God, and just pray a religious prayer. You're not going to do that. It's going to come from the depth of your heart. And he's talking genuinely to God. And he has an audacity to tell God, God, remember now how I have walked before you. My goodness. So basically there was no wrong in his walk before God. Wow. And he's saying, in truth, I lived in truth. And with perfect heart, my goodness. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sorely. People of God, some people, when they face certain challenges in life, you will think that this is a result of something you did wrong. Most of the times, it's not even the case. That is the religious way of putting people to guilt, condemnation, and shame. But you got to say, I've done nothing wrong. So I will not accept this sickness. Yeah. There was one thing he did. He accepted orderlessness because Prophet Aisha revealed it. He said there's no order in his house. Everything was chaotic. And he said, you, you, you accepted orderlessness and then you're not fought against it. You accommodated it and that is killing you. And now Hezekiah is crying. Okay, now watch what happens. You're with me still? This is so beautiful. And it came to pass before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, saying what? Wow, this is powerful. You're with me? And it happened. People of God, and it happens just like that. Come on now. It just happens just like that. The moment you identify what is the orderlessness and the moment you connect back to God and say, God, I want to do something about this immediately. The word of the Lord came, comes back to Isaiah the prophet. Before he could go to the middle court. In this context, it will look like Isaiah is a false prophet, you know. He just came and said, you're going to die. And then God, he's going. And God says, I've changed my mind. There is a way to the Father's heart. You can change outcomes. How? By just listening to a prophetic instruction. Oof. Just the moment he heard, there is grace that comes to your life when you hear a prophecy. Do you know that? If you get a prophecy, there is so much of grace that is wrapped around that prophetic word. If you do something about it, the grace of God will visit you even just like this. Before you left the door of this church and gone out, suddenly some things have already changed in your life. All you need to do is, what do I do with a word like this that is coming to me? What is it? You have to become diligent. You got to pick and say, God, what is it? What do I do to change something about me today? First point starts by talking to God about what you heard. You know, the thing is, people hear and leave it at that. How many of you have prayed after you heard a prophecy over the prophecy? Okay, I'm not stepping on your toes. I've lost. I'm, lo I'm stopping that vocabulary now. You got a prophecy, but did you pray over the prophecy? Today's world, we don't do it. 
Because sometimes, like this, prophecy and God's heart are in two different places. Oof. Okay, you're still catching up to my message. The prophecy that Isaiah gave was very far from the heart of God. You getting this? Did God want Hezekiah to really die? You're getting it. You're getting it slowly. So the prophecy was so far from God's original intent. But God was seeing, if I give him a prophecy like this, to an author, through an authorized man of God, will he change his trajectory and come back to my heart? Ooh, oh my goodness. Because God was laying that prophecy like a net to bring Hezekiah back to his own identity of God is my strength. And he releases that word and he sees, will Hezekiah now turn around, reject this sickness? And catch on to God and say, God, you are my strength. I'm not letting this devour me anymore. And will he come back? So now, God sends a word through prophet Isaiah. Ready? Yes. Now I want you to see this. This is called address. <laughs> I was trying to say. Okay? And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, return, watch the words, and tell Hezekiah. Did you hear how the beginning was? Thus says the Lord. I don't know, I don't care who you are. Die. That is the end of your life. You're done. Pack, pack up your bags, clean up your house, set the house in order. You're ready to go. The ground is ready for you. But now, the, oh, the moment he connects back to the heart of God, his connection is evident in the word that comes to him. Now God addresses him. How? Look at that. Tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, God is establishing his leadership. God is breaking his orderlessness. Oh my goodness. The moment he prayed, heaven is talking to him. The moment he prayed, the moment the prophetic word worked, miracles in his heart to repentance, to alignment, to change the trajectory of destruction to wholeness. The moment Hezekiah turned his heart around, now God is like, tell my leader. Wow. Do you, do you guys see the layers in it? Yes. Now God's address to Hezekiah is, this is amazing, KJV. Tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, before you orderless fellow, go die. Now God is like, I respect him now. People of God, your respect doesn't come by just what you've gone through but whom you're going it with through. Okay, you're very quiet now. Your respect, heaven respects it when you're held on to, it's not just what you've gone through, but how did you go through it? Did you hold on to God with it? And did you tell God, no matter what kind of a trial, no matter what kind of a sickness, no matter what kind of a heartbreak, no matter what kind of a tragedy, but nothing about you in me will change ever. My identity will remain strong. My identity is not going to be compromised. I am a man of God. I am called to one to walk after God's own heart. I, that thing is not changing. That kind of orderness you hold on to your life. God will not address you as a nobody. God will always come to you and say, Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Wow. You'd see the flip happens in five minutes. Five minutes. How much long would have it taken for him to leave and go? The grace began to work. Ha! There is one such grace when you align to God, things immediately work in the realms of the spirit. All of a sudden, things begin to get restored. All of a sudden, that which is falling begins to come 
to fullness. All of a sudden, every chaos leaves you. All of a sudden, you're rising up. All of a sudden, depression leaves you. All of a sudden, hope fills you. Just one word of alignment. Rasakata. Come on, pray in the spirit. Something is happening. Ziforianta raba seke nianto roboko seke. Lata raba kasi kanianta. God is looking for leaders. God is looking for people who are walking with the heart of God. God is looking for people who are connected to His grace. May God awaken his strength in you today. May the saving grace of God come upon you today. May that which is being broken be restored today. That which is being divided may be made whole today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tell the leader of my people. Do you see people? In one minute... From a nobody to a somebody. That's the grace. That is the grace. You know, God is like, he's not bothered. Leave him. But the moment he became, no Lord, I can't do this. I'm changing. God says, now. Now. So prophet Isaiah, first time when he prophesied, he prophesied to the broken Hezekiah. To his flesh. And to his soul. But now, <laughs> I'm teaching you something in the prophetic. Prophet Isaiah is prophesying to Hezekiah, the man in the spirit. Now he's prophesying to his spirit. Before God spoke to his flesh and said, time up, <laughs> pack the bags, leave, the, leave, 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 it's time. But now God is talking to his spirit man. And this is the address. You want to know what was the deposit in his life? We're going to finish this quickly, okay? I'm doing my best. Because you don't want me to preach like conference every Sunday morning, right? <laughs> you have to connect the dots, okay? Thus, tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Watch the words. Look at your Bible. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father. Is David Hezekiah's father? Come on, talk to me. Spiritual lineage. Spiritual inheritance. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There is a kind of shortcut. Oh, I'm telling you. There is a kind of a shortcut and an anointing that can transfer into your life quickly. It's crazy. I want to tell you, it is so crazy. David had so many sons and it was not Hezekiah. Okay? But now, God wants to do everything through his lineage. God wants to do everything through his spiritual lineage, his river, his flow. God says, that one was going to, who had planned to die. He was like, I don't care about that one. Let him die however he wants. But this one, same Hezekiah, but this one, he has a different inheritance. You're seeing the differentiation? So my question to you is, people of God, who are you living for? Are you living for your flesh? Are you living for your soul? There's a prophecy for that too. You'll receive from people prophecies for your soul and for your flesh. The enemy will even provoke people to prophesy to your flesh. You know, sometimes overnight things will die overnight. But, you know, have you tasted a coffee that really percolates? I don't know. How many of you drink coffee here? You, know, you all, okay. That's hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I went to Salt Lake City. <laughs> Can I tell you a joke? Can I tell you a joke? One light moment in the middle. <laughs> He's laughing. I, I love coffee, okay? So I sat in this office. Free coffee machines, right? I wanted to taste every kind. Three coffees during nine hours. I was drinking coffee like as if it was like water, you know? Not so bad. I'm just exaggerating at this point. I was trying all kinds of creamers. This guy was sitting next to me. This is my first, second or third day. Mormons don't drink coffee. Okay. I said, bro, I'm going to make you a coffee too. I brought it. I'm like, have coffee. 
He's like, no, thank you. I'm like, you look so tired. Drink coffee. He's like, no, I don't want it. I kept pushing it to him. At least two minutes I worked. I was like, why is this guy acting as if I'm giving him some poison or something? What's going on? And then the, the neighbor next to me said, hey, can I talk to you in the pantry? I went to the side. He's like, you know, Mormons, they don't drink coffee. I'm like, why? He's like, we'll talk about it another time. But they don't drink coffee. I don't know why either. I'm like, okay, well... Jesus, why did I go there? You don't know. There are prophecies that can come to your soul. There are prophecies that can come to your flesh, even through God. I'm going deep now. Because God knows the trajectory you're choosing already. And if you have made it a choice to go with the soul or the flesh and not hold on to the spirit trajectory. I said it's like coffee that takes longer. That's what I was saying. Like you grind the beans, you make it go through. It takes a while. But it's going to be the real deal out of your life. And when God wants to do that, God will weigh your heart, your soul and your spirit and God will see, is this inheritance he wants or he just wants this little one? Do you see? Are you connecting the dots? I'll almost be done. God saw Hezekiah while he was dying. God knew he didn't want anything to do with David's inheritance. He wanted to bail out. He wanted to embrace that sickness and die. God said, he has given into his flesh. He's given into his soul's desire. Let him go. But the moment Isaiah came with a saving grace prophecy. Oh, I love it. That's why he spoke about the Savior, you know. Chapter 53. Isaiah, you forgot? How interesting. You think names are just like that? Every name has an anointing. You know, one day I'm going to preach on it. How names can provoke anointing. We should preach on that. It's, it's interesting that there are many times I've prophesied to unborn babies and God has given me accurate names for them. It, of course, it includes gender reveal too in it. And then God gives the accurate names. And I'm, I watch the trajectory of these kids. There are some prophecies I've given to some kids. I'm seeing them now. There are seven years old, eight years old, nine years old. I'm like amazed at it. How that name carries an anointing. And, but they have to dial into that identity. So it's very special people of God. So you know what? You think Isaiah was just like, Rangli, I'm prophet Isaiah. I'll write about the crucifixion, the cross. No, it's all super anointed. That is why God, even when, when Jacob wrestled, God said, first I have to change this guy's name. I can't do anything without changing his name. Because his fleshly declaration will kill the spiritual assignment in his life. Oof, I just said something powerful. Because a fleshly declaration over him, it's like a prophecy when they're calling him, Jacob, Jacob, they're telling them, you're a con man, you're a supplanter, you're good for nothing. They're calling those constantly over him. And now how will his spiritual identity mature? So God is like, we have to cut this off. Okay, let's come back to this. That's another sermon. So how I'm talking about percolated coffee, it takes time. So God is like, Hezekiah, you don't want to be like David. You don't want to war with the enemies and not allow the enemies to scar you. David went through so much in his life. Was David a king overnight? The day he received prophecy, trouble began. You're not talking to me. Come on now. The day Samuel anointed him, his wilderness began. So now Hezekiah is facing battles after battles. And Hezekiah is like, oh my goodness, I'm done. I don't want any more inheritance. So God is like, what part of him shall I speak to? His soul or his flesh? And God sent Isaiah with the saving grace to provoke something. And Isaiah gave a prophecy. Then he realized, oh my God, this is the end of me. But the moment he prayed through his spirit man, 
awakening his real identity god is my strength now god speaks back to hezekiah the captain of my people and who are you you have an inheritance the inheritance is of your father david yeah there have been so many generations between david and you but because you connect to me in this way whatever was on david will come like a deposit over your life watch these words okay i have heard thy prayer seen thy tears behold i will heal thee and on the third day you shall go up you know this is very crazy one of us read verse 6 surely i will heal you on the third day you shall go up to the house of god why am i restoring you i want you to get into order go to the house of god again get back into the house of god hezekiah when you started your kingship you were so zealous for the house of god now you're sitting sick now rise up and go back to the house of god and you know this is what this is what he says interesting i wanted to preach this last sunday but it never happened you know because this is a loaded message i have decided i won't push everything over you in one go there's a second layer to it next sunday okay but i'm i'm we're going to slowly start teaching in a way that you can process it i have seen your tears surely i will heal you on the third day you shall go up to the house of god and i will add to your days 15 years timeline restoration timeline why is god giving him 15 years have you asked sometimes the greatest blessing we have in our life is god giving you time you know sometimes we say right now god right now right now with this very moment most of the times in that god is not there that's fast food but when god wants to do something he gives a piece called time for you to become like him i am thankful <laughs> going to crack a joke giving you disclaimer before i crack a joke i'm so happy that you're meeting this jaitan henry <laughs> not the one 7 8 years ago let me see my people on zoom <laughs> some of my spiritual children are here they will tell you 10 years ago my prophetic what you did 2 days ago this time this is what you did this is what you said it was always calling out all the junk you know i was super fired up to be a holy still we believe and walk to become holy before the lord that is our portion but my prophetic was driven in a way that i never gave people solution i showed them what their issue was all the time people were scared you know we had some people who were addicts in our church but i i actually thank god for the way they received me you know what they would be high two days ago and they'll come to church sit at the back seat still high but would not stop coming to church and god eventually fully cleaned them up three times into places rehabs everything and finally god cleaned them up just through the word i mean we have seen miracles like crazy i know there's one person joining me from goa today how interesting is that god bless you sir for joining me from that region that region i preached in india 12 years ago out of 300 people 278 people in the room got healed 278 people what's interesting to me is there was 278 people having something or the other you know how broken is today's life come on now that's odd right the local television people came and started to film me because they heard something was happening everybody were getting healed and they and they broadcasted it on that that place they they started showing it on tv what was happening i mean i have seen things it all started with uh, with one kid's deaf ear being opened and one lady's eyes being opened that's when it took off you know what i want to tell you when god gives you time 
God's making you a master of something. You remember I told in the beginning, skillful. That Chetan didn't know what to do. It just happened. Glory showed up. But today you ask me, I am on a trajectory in my life. Not to do flukes. But walking in a path where one day God will say now. And that will be a time of glory explosion. And you're ready for that foundation. And now you you know, this kind of teaching and word enters your spirit. You're not just making me the main man of the show. You will be the same too. Because this kind of teaching in your spirit, you will change your own destiny. And you'll change the destiny of others. Because you know how to, now how to operate through the word of God being in your spirit. So now prophet Isaiah is prophesying to the spirit of Hezekiah. So people of God, there is a prophecy. Let me not confuse you too much. There is a prophecy that is sent even from God to your flesh and to your soul. But it takes work to pull a prophecy from God for your spirit. Because when the prophecy hits your spirit level, it comes with inheritance. It comes with deposit. It comes with God talking to you as a leader. Maybe you're not right now, but God talks to the future you. And God gives you time. Oof. God restores time. And this is exactly what happens. And God, look at this. There is something, you know, we have to. Hey, you didn't tell me it was 12.45 now. <laughs> it's five minutes fast. What are you saying? Okay. People on Zoom, something is happening. Somebody watching me. Your marriage of 10 years. The Lord is inputting something today. He's making you go back to restore the 10 years of your marriage. But he's adding five more years. As I said, 15 years. The grace of 15 years is coming back to you. And somebody here is receiving 15 years of grace. You should begin to live as if 15 years was not devoured in your life by the enemy. I'm prophesying over you. May you hear it in the spirit. I'm prophesying over all of you. Can you live as if 15 years of delay never happened in your life? Can you begin to live as if 15 years of Chaos never happened. See, I'm seeing things in the spirit. Some of your problems actually started 15 years ago. Problems started 15 years ago. And God is saying that 15 years ago, that associations you had, those people you had, the things you got introduced to, the Lord is saying today, see, I heard this in the spirit in the beginning. Now God is showing me that. Now God is saying, go back and take it back from the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. La Taraba. Somebody is receiving a grace for 15 years reversal. I, I want you to pray right now. It is happening. You might, I'm telling you, it's not even about deep things. It is maybe about simple things that clicked and changed the trajectory of your life. God is restoring that today. Satakaba, Mambra Kaseke, Merobosika, Malto Loboniante, Mambra Hasika. My God, there is something is happening right now. Release, Lord, release your people on Zoom. Release your people from that blockage. Release your people from that hindrance. Ratataha, Sefariata, Sambra Hasete, Zufariante, Manto Rokoseke, Mlambra Kasika. Come on, open your mouth and pray in the spirit. Something is happening all over this place. Ratataha, Leto Robo. That suicidal spirit started to talk to you 15 years ago. Today, shoot it out of your system. Lataraba, Mambra Haseke, Ziforianta Raba. Confusion started 15 years ago. Boot it out today. Zataraba, Mambra Kasika. My goodness, something is happening all over this place. Remain in prayer. Let's complete this. I will add to your days 15 years. Watch this. Don't miss this. I will deliver you. God said to Hezekiah, I will deliver you. One, I'll heal your flesh. I will deliver your soul. Wow. I will deliver the bondages on your mind. I will deliver you and this what? Watch. City out of the hand of the king of 
What's that? Assyria. I'm going to give you some deep prophetic information. So what was Hezekiah's true problem? Please talk to me. What was Hezekiah's true problem? What it was just a normal sickness? The sickness Hezekiah's sickness was rooted by the hand of the king of Assyria. He didn't even know that. Oh my goodness. I know it's wow. He thought it is his flesh that was weakening and dying. And God kept all this information away from him until he aligned to the spirit man who he was. And then God sends Isaiah the prophet to reveal the whole layers of his healing and deliverance. He says, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver your soul. But the biggest problem is you don't know where the origin of these things are. The origin of these things are coming from the king of Assyria because they worship other things. And guess what? And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant's sake. All his oppression started by him saying, who will protect me? Who will protect me? Now God is taking the ownership to defend him and the city. <laughs> wow, what an inheritance. God is like, how I fought for David, I will fight for you. When David stood before Goliath, he said, not me, but the God who's with me will come against you. That inheritance, wow. that grace was being transferred to Hezekiah. And God says, Hezekiah, no more your battles are yours anymore. Wow. Your battles are becoming mine now. I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Wow. I think we'll stop here today. Learn the art of hearing God's word in your spirit and aligning your spirit in a way. Now God takes ownership with his inheritance on you. This is deep people of God. I'm sure you won't find this sermon online. This you won't find it because I gave you what I heard from the Lord. And I'm giving you this because God is speaking this to you. My goodness, what a powerful awakening is happening in this room. Your glory is tangible in this place. Something is about to change. Awaken supernatural grace. Yahweh. Come on, rise to your feet. Rafa. seeing a very unique vision you know seeds are sown um, saplings are coming out some of you need to be covered for a season don't expose yourself before it's your time don't become the enemy's target to kill you before it's your time. It's okay to stay hidden and grow strong. And then, the, I'm, I don't know whom I'm prophesying this over. The Bible says, And the child was hidden in the wilderness until the day of his manifestation. Don't rush. Don't rush. 
you might think oh is this going to be a delay no it's not going to be a delay it's actually going to be a better restoration safara bahaseke lanto robo because god is already giving you 15 years i don't know to whom but if you're receiving that i want you to really connect to the lord in your spirit right now and begin to sing this song your glory is tangible in this place something is about to change something is changing in your dna awaken supernatural faith yahweh ra is about to manifest himself in some of you in very peculiar ways i'm hearing that word peculiar grace lambroso konianta peculiar grace is coming to some of you is this not what the word says a royal priesthood a holy nation and what's the last word peculiar people they won't be able to tell you who you are they won't sometimes they will mistake you for the looks the way you look from the outside but god who knows you in the inside will release a peculiar kind of grace they will have all the backup but you will be one man that will show off and turn the whole tide around because there is a peculiar grace Rafa sataka bayanta raba Oh you want healing you will see healing Oh you want deliverance you will see deliverance Oh you want the word of the Lord you will hear it Oh you want to see supernatural signs and wonders you will see it because I am not boxed I am a peculiar kind from the Lord La sakata raba Come on somebody pray into it jump into this river and begin to sing this song Come on worship him Ratata ha zibare come on sing this song Zateke rebaniata Elohim shada supernatural provision supernatural provision thank you jesus shatata barabaha sikoriata raba seeing this television network wgn9 is there a television network who are they yes. you are chicago yes. let them come lord sabara baliya taraba kasi katala ba mambro ko sikoni antaraba father today i stir up the well of healing in this place rekombro satakayanta labanianta lord i'm 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 asking you to open up the well of healing in this place father you have done it and you will do it again let the blind see let the lame walk let the deaf hear let the dying be risen back to ratarabaka sikariata Father I pray in the mighty name of Jesus let the clouds of healing and prophetic begin to descend on Chicago one more time in the mighty name of Jesus come on people agree with me raba sakata labaha mambra kasika riata lord i release your holy warring angels to be released right now you never heard me pray today you're hearing me releasing the angels watch what my god will do from today lord i release the holy warring angelic assistant descend right now in the mighty name of jesus take territory of chicago let the keys of chicago be taken up sata baraka sika talabaha mambra sata raka seke teke let the healing rain of god begin 
Zeto broko sekanianta, mazatata, membroko sikariata. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we stir it, we stir it, we stir it, we stir it, we stir it. You're worthy. Can somebody shout to him that he's worthy? Come on, tell the Lord you're worthy, Jesus. Jesus, you're worthy. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy. You're worthy. Lord, let testimonies come of another level. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody shouted a mighty amen. amen. Come on, put your hands together and celebrate this grace. Give me that mic. Yes, God, take it. Every ship that is docked, let it move. I said, blow this one more time. Something the Lord is about to usher into your life. One, two, three, take it. Living in hurts, living in bitterness, living in unforgiveness is the things of the past from today. Live free, live well, live whole. Have the best time of your life from today in the goodness of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.